Good morning. Time for another installment of my running ramblings. Uh, this morning as I was out on my run, I wanted to share with you a couple of things about pain and empathy. And uh, this morning as I ran, I decided to push myself. You know, the last few days I've been just trying to keep within that pace that is, you know, I talked about, I think on Sunday or Friday or Monday or something about endurance um, uh, of finding that pace where we can just kind of go indefinitely. And today I decided to push it. I want to I want to improve my time. I know that that uh, change and, and adaptation don't occur unless I'm pushing the limits of what I'm doing. And so I wanted today push things a little bit. And so I decided to to really push my and increase my pace, knowing that it wouldn't be something that I could keep up for a long period of time, but that uh, you know at some point I would have to stop because I knew I was going faster than than a lot faster than I was normally able to. In fact, I think the first couple miles I ran close to an eight minute mile pace, which is like way faster than I've been running, and it hurt. I was feeling the burn in my legs almost immediately and, and pretty soon my lungs were hurting. Um, but I managed to keep pushing a lot further than what I typically would. And part of that was because it hurt. I could feel the pain, but I could control it. I knew I, I, I'm in training, basically. This is a, a controlled environment, a controlled situation in which I control the pain that is put upon me, and I know I can stop at any time. And so that allows me to push myself into pain, to, to stress myself beyond my normal limits, and you know, kind of like a controlled burn. You know, the forest fire, forest department, they go out and they'll burn an area because it's got too much fuel. And if it were to catch fire accidentally or randomly, then it would be out of control. But they can burn the extra stuff there and keep it under control because they can stop it at any time and therefore actually prevent further future disasters. That's the same thing in our life. I can control the burn. So I push it and I push it and I keep and even though I feel the burn, I allow myself to be conscious and aware of what's going in my, on my body. How can I, how can I keep pushing this? And I can take it one more step, or you know, I can run that next hundred meters, and and I'll stay with it. And I ended up running probably a good little over two miles at that pace. And then, unlike most of the rest of my runs, where I run the entire distance. The last quarter mile, I stopped and walked, and I felt okay with it. Normally, I'd feel kind of ashamed with myself for having to walk, uh, but and that's not to say walk. But but in this case, I looked at it as like, no, you've just been doing a controlled burn. You've been pushing it really hard for two miles, and you've shown yourself what you can do. Oh my gosh, lousy air conditioner comes on. Let me go over here. Um, and so, I would. Because I had done that, then I allowed myself the freedom to walk because walking is still working. So what does that have to do with empathy? Um, at, the, at the same time, I, while I was doing my run, I was listening to uh, Brene Brown's uh, Dare to Lead a book on Audible. And I would highly recommend you go read that. But specifically, I was listening to the section on shame and empathy. And I would recommend you go take a look at that section, uh, particularly. And there, Brene talks about having empathy. And, and there's six typical ways that we have empathy misses, which is somebody needs empathy. And there are six common pitfalls that we often automatically respond to with that are not showing empathy. We think, excuse me, we think we're being helpful. We think that we're trying to uh, encourage somebody. But we're not and we're, we're having an empathy miss and so she talks about these and I realize I do these things a lot of these things a lot um, I had a major empathy miss yesterday uh, with my wife and I screwed it up pretty good um, but we all do and the thing is not what she talks about is not being perfect lot not learning to always have empathy, but realizing that we're not always going to operate perfectly. You know, she had one of her students that talks about, well, can, 
Is there a decision tree that we can make where if somebody says this, then I respond with that. And if they shift this way, then I shift with them so that I'm always in empathy. No, it ain't going to happen. There are a thousand different situations that people are in and there are a thousand different ways we can respond. And most of the time we're going to respond not ideally, but there are a lot of times that we can. And, and the goal is she calls it empathy is a practice, meaning we practice, meaning if we're practicing, we're going to more often fail than not. And that's okay. We're going to more often, and she doesn't like to use the word failure because it's shame, but we miss. We're going to more often miss our target than not. Sometimes we'll be close to the target. Sometimes we'll be way off the target, but we're going to miss. The important thing is that we keep practicing, that we keep trying. And just like in my run where I have an opportunity to control the burn so that at a later time, I don't find myself in a situation where I have to run, but I don't have the ability to control the burn. It's going to hurt no matter what, or I have to stop and, and give in to whatever's chasing me, then it's better that I control that burn up front. So with empathy, a lot of time we're going to miss, we're going to screw up. So take opportunity when things are safe, when things are not stressful, when thing, when you're not under the gun, when somebody's not in a place where they need empathy right now and you don't know how to give it to them, take the time to think about that. Read things like, like uh, Brene's book, Dare to Lead, and, and focus on having empathy and think about those times where you didn't show empathy and places where I can respond better and practice that. And sometimes, uh, and this is what one of my counselors have been teaching me, is uh, you got to learn to sit with the discomfort and the pain when it's not on you and take that time to really sit and think about what's going on and, and sometimes that's even when you're alone and there's not a high stress situation it's hard sometimes to sit with your emotions and stop and look back at your behaviors and your actions and your thoughts and go oh man that looks really ugly and it's hard to do that sometimes but do that at a time when you can control the burn. Just like when you go, when I go on a run, I can push myself because I can control the burn. I can stop and walk at any point, but I can also push myself further and farther than I normally would. And so do that with yourself. Practice empathy with yourself and visualize ways in which you can do better the next time in situations where you may have had an empathetic miss. You, you screwed up in talking with somebody and you screwed up in how you showed empathy. But, but definitely go check out Brene's book, Dare to Lead. Check out section four on uh, shame and empathy and look at the six ways that we typically miss in having empathy and showing empathy for others. And I guarantee it, it'll be a big benefit to you and keep practicing empathy and keep pushing yourself in those ways that you need to grow. Talk to you later, guys.